Truth of the Stock Tape Book 1. Preparation for Trading No man can learn what he has not preparation for learning, however near to his eyes is the object. A chemist may tell his most precious secrets to a carpenter, and he shall be never the wiser. The secrets he would not utter to a chemist for an estate. Emerson in 1917, when the United States was forced to enter the war against Germany, we heard on every hand, we are unprepared for war. Wilson's period of watchful waiting, instead of preparing for the inevitable had at last brought us face to face with war without being ready. Lawyers, doctors, engineers and professional men who make a success spend anywhere from two to five years' time studying and preparing to practice their profession before they begin making any money. Men enter into speculation in Wall Street without any preparation. They have made no study of it whatsoever. They try to deal in something they know nothing about. Is it any wonder then that they lose? Speculators and investors who simply guess, follow tips, rumors, newspaper talk, and so-called inside information have no chance of ever making a success unless they follow some well-defined plan based on science and supply and demand they are sure to lose. Over 20 years of study and experience places me in a position to give you a definite, practical set of rules and instructions which will lead to success if you follow them. No great success or gain can be expected unless a man is willing to study and learn by past experience. You cannot get something good for nothing and must pay with time, money, or knowledge for success. Chapter 1. What is tape reading? Tape reading is a study of fluctuations of stocks as they appear on the stock tape, and the ability to judge the ones that are in a strong or weak position and determine the psychological moment to buy or sell. We must also be able to determine the stocks that are inactive and show no definite trend. Tape reading is psychological because the mind acts and is influenced by everything it sees, hears, smells, tastes or feels. In reading the tape, we are not influenced alone by what we see, but by what we feel or sense, which cannot always be explained or a satisfactory reason given because it is intuition. What is intuition? You often hear traders say, I am buying or selling this stock on my intuition. The best definition I can give of intuition is that it is instantaneous reasoning. It is that something which tells us when we are right or wrong before we have time to reason it out. The way to benefit through intuition is to act immediately and not stop to reason or ask why. That is what a good tape reader does. The tape registers the dominating force currents from business all over the country. It contains the condensed opinion of the majority and weighs the hopes and fears of manipulators, the public and businessmen. That is why it is a reliable guide and business barometer, if you know how to read it correctly. And here is where the rub comes. The tape tells the truth if you can interpret it correctly. Tape reading requires a strong will power and a mind that, when it once sees the trend of the market, cannot be changed until the tape shows the change and is not influenced by news, false rumors, tips, or hearsay. Being able to read the tape correctly and act on your judgment is an entirely different proposition, which I will explain later on. Chapter 2. Can money be made in Wall Street, or can the stock market be beaten? You have often heard the expression 99 out of every 100 who go into Wall Street lose. Then one man out of every hundred must win. Therefore my answer is that Wall Street can be beaten and that you can make money by speculating and investing along conservative lines and by trading in a few selected stocks. But how are you going to do it? You must have knowledge and science. No, no, no. More than the other fellow or the common trader. Find out how successful men in Wall Street have made their fortunes. Then go and do likewise. Remember that knowledge is power. Statistics show that 98% of businessmen fail sooner or later. Then why do men go into business? Because 2% of them make fortunes out of general business and keep them. Just ask yourself the question, who gets all the money that is lost in Wall Street? It does not evaporate. For every dollar, lost someone makes a dollar. Then the way to make it is to trade the same way the fellow does who gets what you lose. Remember that every time you buy someone sells, 
and every time you sell someone buys. The majority of people who buy stocks lose money in the end. Why? Because they guess, follow newspaper dope, fake tips, or inside information. They do not make safe investments. They gamble on 10 or 15 points margin. They nearly always buy near the top. And of course, nothing can keep them from losing. The general public do not sell stocks short. Therefore, they are always wrong in a bear market. When a man loses money buying stocks and refuses to sell short, he can always look back and say, if I had only sold when I bought, look how much profit I would have made. Then, why doesn't he learn to sell short? In another chapter, I will show you the proof that it is safe and practical to sell short. At the present time, there are over 700 stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And if you group them under their proper headings, there will be over 20 different groups. If you study the action of all the stocks in one group and watch them on the tape, you will find it is too much for you. And that you cannot make money trading in all of the stocks in any one group, much less by trying to trade in several groups. Tape reading requires patience, and the essence and value of it is concentration. There is no such thing as a man being born with a mind that can concentrate on 10 things at one time, much less 700. Then success depends upon selecting a few stocks and concentrating upon them. Chapter 3. How to read the stock tape. The general opinion prevails with the public, especially among traders outside New York City, that the proper way to read the tape is to stand at the ticker and watch every quotation as it comes out. Nothing is more erroneous. Expert tape readers are very few and far between. It is a study of a lifetime. While the tape shows the trend of the market, there are so many minor changes and quick reversals that the average man cannot tell whether the big trend has turned or whether it is only a minor change that will last a few hours, a few days, or a few weeks before the main trend is resumed again. If a trader goes into a broker's office to watch the tape, he will find anywhere from two or three to a dozen traders standing around the ticker, all talking from time to time and expressing their opinions or what they hear on different stocks. He must also listen to the gossip that comes over the news ticker, floating rumors from the street and information about buyers and sellers that comes from the floor. With all of these disturbances, there is not one man in a million that can concentrate enough to tell anything about what stocks are going to do. Besides, if he is able to pick a winner and starts to buy or sell, he will be influenced by what someone says who is standing around the ticker, and the result is that he will not act at the right time. Then it is impossible to beat the market by tape reading in a broker's office. No matter how strong a man's will power may be, he is influenced, consciously or unconsciously, by what he hears or sees, and his actions or executions are interfered with accordingly. This is the reason why a few big traders, like Livermore, have a private office with a ticker, where they can be away from all outside influences and watch the tape, form their impressions, and act on them without being influenced by things they do not want to hear. But only traders who have a very large amount of money and can devote all of their time to the market and tape reading can afford to have an office and a ticker where they can study the tape alone without interference. The average man cannot afford this. Then it is necessary to know how to read the tape without seeing it, or without watching it all the time. Market movements of importance, i.e. the long swings, require weeks and sometimes months to get ready, or for accumulation and distribution to be completed. There is always plenty of time to buy or sell one or two days after a big move gets underway. Therefore it is not necessary to watch the tape every day, or every hour, in order to determine what stocks are going to do. It can be read just as easy and better after the market closes. The tape is simply a record of prices, and if you have this record of high and low prices made during the day, you can form your judgments from it. Market movements depend upon supply and demand. It requires volume of trading in proportionate large or small amounts to move stocks up or down. The volume of sales to the stock market is the same as the steam is to the locomotive or the gasoline is to the automobile. The sales are the motive power which drives prices up or down. For example, United States steal as 5 million shares of common stock, and it requires a very large volume of sales 
to move this stock up or down very much. General Motors has 50 million shares of common stock, and its fluctuations are confined to the very narrow range, because the buying or selling of 100,000 shares will not move it more than a point, if that much, while the buying of 100,000 shares of Baldwin will often move it up or down 5 or 10 points, because there are only 200,000 shares of Baldwin outstanding a seldom ever over 100,000 shares of stock floating in the street. Therefore, in order to understand the meaning of volume, you must know the total capital stock outstanding and the floating supply of the stock you are trading in. Max Pete, for several years, has made moves of from 50 to 100 points, while US Steel has not moved 10. The reason was that the floating supply of Max Pete was very small, while the floating supply of US Steel was very large. Another thing the tape reader must know is the financial position of the stock, whether it is weak or strong. It is not easy to frighten investors and traders and start a selling move in a stock which is generally known to be in a very strong financial position. Neither is it easy to force a stock by manipulation to very high levels that is generally known to have very little intrinsic value. Many stocks, known as mystery stocks, which are supposed to have large concealed assets, often have big moves up or down because the public buyer or seller on the hope that something favorable is going to happen or on the fear that something unfavorable is going to happen. As a rule, a stock that pays extra dividends or cuts a melon is talked about and rumors circulated months and even years before the actual event takes place. Then, of course, when the good news comes out, it has been anticipated and discounted and the stock declines instead of advancing, as the public expect. The tape is the great scale in which the weight of all buying and selling is weighed and the balance of supply and demand shown by the loss or gain in prices. When supply exceeds demand, prices decline to a level where supply and demand are about equal. At this stage fluctuations become narrow, and it may require weeks or months to determine which way the next move will be. When demand exceeds supply, prices advance. Then how can the man who stands over the ticker day by day determine a big move before it starts? He cannot. The ticker will fool him once or twice each day while it is getting ready. It requires time to buy a large amount of stock when accumulation is taking place, and it requires time to distribute a large amount of stock at the top. One day, one week, or one month is not enough for a big move. Sometimes it requires several months, or even a year, to complete accumulation or distribution. While this process is going on, you can keep up a chart of the stock you are interested in and judge much better when the big move starts than you can by watching the ticker every day. Chapter 4. How the tape fools you. The tape is used to fool traders, for often when stocks look the weakest on the tape, they are the strongest as accumulation is taking place. At other times when they are booming and very active and appear the strongest, they are really the weakest, because the insiders are selling while everybody is enthusiastic and buying. The man who watches the tape daily is influenced by his hopes and fears. He cannot help it. Suppose that the market has been strong all day, and the very stocks that he is interested in are gradually moving up, when suddenly, around 2.30 p.m., the market starts to break. It goes down for 15 minutes and active stocks are off a point from the highs all around. It does not rally, and by 5 minutes to 3, or closing time, they are off another point. The volume is heavy, and he decides that something is wrong, and he sells out of the close. The next morning stocks open up from one half to one point. Why? Because the selling in the last half hour of the day before was simply the result of profit taking, and all of the traders who were scared sold out of the close rather than carry them overnight. The result being that the supply of stocks to be offered next morning was limited, and the reaction had in no way interfered with or changed the main trend. One great mistake the man makes who watches the ticker all the time is that he trades too often. He gets in and out sometimes several times during the day, and each time he pays commission. If he buys or sells higher or lower each time, even though he has made profits on his trades, he is increasing the percentage against him. A man who makes 300 trades in the year, or say, one for each market day, must pay an average of one half point at in and out. 
it cannot be done for less than one half point on 100 shares 300 times is 150 points for expenses during the year. Where is the man who can make money with such a handicap? Suppose a man makes one trade each month or 12 trades during the year. His expenses are only six points against the scalper's expense of 150. Another important fact traders overlook is that the more times a man gets in or out of the market, the more times he changes his judgment. Therefore, the percentage of his being wrong increases. In a bull or bear market, there are often big reverse moves opposite to the main trend, from which big profits can be made, the man cannot catch them by jumping in and out every day. He must wait until he has a real cause and sufficient reasons, based on facts, before he makes a trade. If he jumps in or out on hope or fear, he will not only make losses, but he will miss the real opportunity when it comes. The daily moves generally mean very little to the main trend of the market. Overnight buying or selling orders. As a rule, out of town buying orders accumulate overnight. If the buying orders are in excess of the selling, stocks will advance for the first 30 minutes, while the public's buying orders are being filled. Then a reaction will take place. Prices may go lower than they were at the opening. Drift along in an uncertain way until about 2.30 p.m., when the professional crowd on the floor decide to even up. Then either advance or decline for 30 minutes, according to whether the floor traders are long or short. Remember that the professional floor traders have no commission to pay. You can buy a stock that goes up one half point, then sell out, and you are just about even, after paying taxes and commission, while the scalper on the floor makes one half point, because he saves the commission. The newspapers on Sundays usually carry a review of the market for the past week and the public. After reading all of the news, send in their buying and selling orders for Monday morning. If the orders are very heavy, they will influence the market for 30 minutes and sometimes one hour. After this, the trend of the market will be the opposite. A market that has been strong during the week or especially during the latter part of the week and closes strong on Saturday is likely to open strong Monday and finish the advance in the first hour on Monday. Therefore, be very careful about buying stocks on Monday morning strong opening. Public buying orders which accumulate over Sunday are all executed Monday morning, and as soon as this demand is supply professionals start selling and the market has a reaction in proportion to its condition and position at the time. Even if it is a bull market, and going higher you will be able to buy cheaper on Monday afternoon or Tuesday, when the professionals are hammering prices down after the public buying wave has been satisfied. The above rule is reversed in a declining market. If stocks have been weak all the week or during the last two or three days of the week and close at the low on Saturday, force selling by the public will come in Monday morning and cause lower prices during the first 30 minutes to one hour. After this pressure is off, the market will rally. Therefore, it pays to sell on a strong rally Monday or to buy on a weak market on Monday morning. This rule, of course, applies to normal markets. False hopes. Another point, when a man is long or short of the market and has a loss, it is but human nature to hope that the trade will go his way. Suppose he is called for margin early in the day. He tells his broker that he will either put up the margin before the close or sell out his stocks. The result is he waits all day and the market fails to rally. The last hour comes, and hope gives away to despair, and he sells out at the close, which causes the market to close weak and near the bottom, because hundreds of people are doing the same thing at the same time. The same rule applies to people who are short of the market. Stocks start advancing early in the day, and they wait for a reaction on which to cover. They look for a reaction around the noon hour, but it fails to come. Again around 2.00 p.m., the market is stronger, and they hope for a reaction, but the advance continues, with the result that near the close all of the shorts get frightened and buy in their stocks. Of course, the market closes on top and is left in a weak technical position, and the next day the reaction comes. For a trader to succeed, he must study human nature and do the opposite of what he finds the general public does. The first day of a decline no one worries much, because they consider it a natural reaction. 
a market will often start declining on Wednesday. On Thursday the decline continues, and the traders begin to sit up and take notice and think they had better get out on the next rally. But Friday comes and no rally. Instead stocks get weaker. Why? Because people who would not sell on the first or second day of the decline begin to sell on the third day. And by Saturday, the whole crowd gets scared and decides to get out and not go over Sunday. The result is that prices will break badly in the last hour and close near the bottom. While the wise trader or tape reader who knew his business sold on the first indication of weakness the first day and did not wait until everybody was selling. This same rule applies to declines and advances lasting weeks or months. The longer the market goes one way or the other, the greater the buying or selling in the last stage, because hope or fear increases as the market advances or declines. And it is hope and fear, not sound judgment, that most people trade on. Stocks to discount future events. The stock market is an accurate barometer of business conditions. Stock prices are nearly always 6 to 12 months ahead of business conditions. First bond prices rise, second stocks advance, third comes business boom. The same happens in a decline. Stocks will be down 6 to 8 months while business is booming because they are discounting the future business depression. Market movements, that is, the main swings, are the result or effect of causes which, as a rule, exist long before the effect is known to the general public. In most cases, news is discounted before it comes out and seldom has much effect after it is generally known. Either good or bad news that is expected usually falls flat as far as the effect on the market is concerned. For instance, an extremely good or bad quarterly or annual report on a stock comes out and the market does not go up or down on it for the reason that it is not news to those on the inside. They knew it 30 to 90 days beforehand. Therefore, when the public gets the news and acts on it, it is too late, for those on the inside who know have already discounted it. If bad news comes out suddenly and stocks start selling off in large volume, then it is safe to assume that the market is going lower, that the public is long with stocks and the insiders are out. If good news appears and stocks start down, it shows that it has been discounted. Your charts will show whether the market is in a period of distribution or accumulation. Sudden unexpected news. Sometimes sudden, unexpected events happen unforeseen. For instance, the earthquake in San Francisco in 1906 was wholly unexpected and unforeseen by either the public or the insiders. It caused great loss and damage to property, and the market started breaking immediately after it, and declined for several weeks until it discounted the damage done to the various properties affected in that territory. When news of this kind comes out, that the market has not had time to prepare for, its full weight and effect must be felt after it comes out. On February 3, 1917 Germany suddenly, and without warning declared the U-boat war against the United States. The stock market had not fully discounted this event because neither the general public nor the insiders knew it was coming. Once the news was out, everyone knew that it meant that the United States must enter the war against Germany. Therefore, it was bad news which had not been fully discounted when a move of this kind occurs and a market opens a way up or down, making a wide range. It is always well to sell out long stocks or cover shorts and wait, because in doing this you are following what the big traders do. On February 3rd, after you saw the market open down on heavy selling, and you watched it for 30 minutes and saw that prices did not get much lower than the opening, it would be an indication that prices had opened at a level where there was support and that a rally would come. If you were short, the proper thing to do would be to cover at the market, then wait and see how stocks acted on the rally that day and the following day. If the rally was small and stocks again declined easily and began to break the low levels made on the day the bad news came out, it would be an indication that prices were going lower. Elections. You will find it of great value if you will go back over the years of presidential elections and study the action of the market and the formation of it on the chart in the early part of the year and again just previous to the election and following it. In most cases you will find that the event, whether considered good or bad, was discounted beforehand. 
there is seldom ever a presidential year, but where at some time there is a scare and severe decline. Public sentiment gets mixed. They decide the Democrats are going to win and the market starts in to discount it. However, it makes no difference whether there is a Democratic president or a Republican. If stocks have been distributed and are in the hands of the public, they will go down during a Republican administration. We have had just as many panics when a Republican president occupied the White House as have occurred when the Democrats were in power. It all depends upon at what level prices are, and the condition of affairs, and the market had yet to measure its effect. The result was that stocks opened off anywhere from 5 to 20 points, but supporting orders had been placed and the buying by shorts afforded enough support to stop the decline in the first hour of trading throughout the country. This will be plainly registered by the tape, and your chart will show it. If not, wait until you get a clear indication. An extreme decline occurred in July and August 1896, which was known as the Silver Panic. The whole country got scared and decided that W.M. J. Bryan was going to be elected and that his silver dream would become a reality. Investors and traders sold stocks regardless of value, and on August 8, the average prices of industrial and railroad stocks reached a level which was the lowest from that day until the date of this writing. In 1912, when Wilson was elected for the first time, the stock market advanced in September and October previous to the election because the Republicans were convinced that the Democrats would not win. Therefore, they did not create any scare to start the public selling stocks. Of course, after Wilson was elected, which really was an unexpected event to investors who believed and feared that the Democrats would ruin the country, they then began to sell stocks and discount the Democratic administration. The war followed in 1914 and completed the liquidation and made it even worse than it would have been. But this decline in stocks would have taken place even though a Republican had been in power, for the good and sufficient reason that prices were high. And that stocks had passed from strong hands into weak, and the general condition of the country was not such as to warrant the existing level of values at the time of the election. After election rallies. When any important election, either presidential or otherwise, takes place, and the market has pretty well discounted it, but the general public throughout the country figure that the event is favourable. They, of course, send in buying orders the next day after election and stocks are strong until this demand is satisfied. It will always pay you to wait two or three days after election and see whether the market continues to move in the same direction after election as it did before. Stocks were strong the first day after Wilson was elected the first time, but the decline started promptly after public buying orders had been filled. Always be careful of buying on top of after election rallies. In the same way, if stocks open off and decline the first two or three days after election, be careful about selling them, as it may be only the public selling, because they are scared and the insiders may support the market and start in advance. Chapter 5. How Stocks Are Sold When new companies are formed and capital is needed, the stock has to be sold to the public. And there is no difference in the method of selling stock and the method used by businessmen in selling their goods. A good businessman advertises his goods, and that is what the manipulators do. When they wish to distribute stocks and get them into the hands of the public, they use the newspapers in every way possible to advertise the stock. Their fluctuations are given wide publicity and everything possible is done to attract the public. It requires wide fluctuations and activity to entice the public to take a hand. They may pay very little attention to a stock selling around 40 when it is only fluctuating 5 or 6 points in 3 or 4 months, but when this same stock reaches 150 and begins to fluctuate 5 and 10 points each day, everybody talks about it. They see great opportunities for making big profits and begin to trade in it. The result is that the wide publicity in advertising induces the public to buy all the stock at a high price. Then the decline starts. They hold on and hope, and nothing much is said about it until the stock gets near the bottom, when all the bad news comes out and everybody talks about it. The wish is farther to the thought. When you read the opinion of any man, whether it be a newspaper writer, the president of some big bank or the head of some large corporation, 
consider and give due weight to the fact that when he talks optimistic, he has something to sell to the public and is not likely to talk in a way to hurt his own business. Many years ago, there was a Mr. B in Wall Street who gathered a lot of information and sometimes wrote for the newspapers. He was well known and often visited different brokerage offices and traders eagerly sought his opinion. They would say, Mr. B, what do you think of Union Pacific? He would reply, I think it is going up. Anyway, I hope it does, for I am long of it. Now, that was his reason for thinking the stock would go up. He owned some of it, and its hope and wish was that it would advance. He certainly did not feel like telling the other fellow that he believed it was going down. If he did, he might start a selling wave that would hurt his own interest. Over optimism. If you have read the newspapers carefully over a long period of years, or if you will go back and look up records, you will find that prominent businessmen who are heads of large corporations are nearly always optimistic. Panics come, and depressions lasting from one to five years with stocks declining anywhere from 25 to over 100 points, yet these men are always optimistic. Do you believe that they are so far wrong in their judgment that they cannot see the trend at the time? Certainly not. They have goods to sell. They must conceal it from the public and talk for their own interests. I cannot recall the time when the officials of the U.S. Steel Corporation were ever pessimistic. Yet, the stock has passed its dividends several times and suffered severe depressions, which as far as the records are concerned, were all unforeseen by the directors. It is a good thing to be an optimist, but whether it be in business or the stock market, it is the truth that helps and protects, and not false hopes and unwarranted optimism. Hopes will not keep the margin call away from you in a panic. The only way to avoid these uncomfortable conditions is to go with the trend of the market, and not against it. The newspapers, as a rule, are against printing anything of a pessimistic nature. In 1920 and 1921, when I issued my forecast on general business conditions, I had based it on the truth and scientific facts. It showed that very depressing conditions were coming in 1920 and 1921, but most of the newspapers refused to publish my predictions yet they were all fulfilled with remarkable accuracy. Forewarned is forearmed. It is certainly better to tell the public before depressing conditions start that they are coming and let them prepare for them, than to wait until the crisis is on and then tell them, as the newspapers do, or cause all the trouble. Every effect is the result of a cause, and the cause must exist long before the effect can be seen by the general public. The proper thing to do is to determine the cause and act on it. For if you wait until you can see the effect, loss in the stock market is certain. Traders ape. After a man has been around Wall Street for 20 years and watches the actions of traders and listens to what they talk about, he will be convinced that the origin of man was certainly from the monkey or the ape, because the average trader simply apes some leader, repeats what he heard some great man say, believes it and applies it to his own case to increase his hopes or assuage his fears. The late Mr. Morgan once said, a man who is a bear on this country will go broke. I have often heard traders in a brokerage office talking bullish and buying say, when a conservative man would warn them that bulls sometimes make money and bears sometimes make money, but that a hog never makes anything. Don't sell stocks short. A man who is a bear on this country will go broke. When Mr. Morgan, whose opinion as a businessman is worthy of respect, made this statement, he was not talking about the stock market at all. If he had been, he would have said that the man who is a bull at the top of markets, which occur every few years, is sure to go broke, and the man who is a bear at the bottom is sure to go broke. If traders would only use a little horse sense, and do their own thinking, stop aping and swallowing all the newspapers tell them, and analyse the reason or the motive behind the men who talk optimistic at the top are pessimistic at the bottom, they would make a great deal more money. To make success in the stock market, you must do your own studying and thinking. Be neither a bull nor a bear. And no matter whose opinion you follow, you will be much better off if you can verify it by your own study of charts, which show the conditions as revealed by the tape, and the thoughts and opinions registered by the majority, and not the opinion of one man or one group of men, 
no matter how strong they may be. The standard oil interests might be very bullish and talk bullish. They might be honest and conscientious about it and might be backing up their opinions by buying standard oil stocks. But the tape will register the buying and selling of all the people in the United States. And if that force of supply and demand shows that the selling of the many is greater than the buying of the few, the stock will decline until it reaches a level where demand exceeds supply. Signs of the Times The Bible says, there is a time for everything. All the laws of nature teach this. There is a time to sow and a time to reap. The four seasons of the year teach us that there is a reaping time and a sowing time, and that we cannot reverse this order of nature's laws. Man does not try to grow oranges on Greenland's icy mountains. Neither does he expect to cut ice from the tropical rivers in Florida, because it is out of season, time, and place. It is the same with the stock market. There is a time to buy and a time to sell. And when this time comes, neither bunches of bears nor bevies of bulls with hot air, hope, optimism, extreme pessimism, depression or bad reports, can force prices above or below the zones of supply and demand at a season. You must learn to go with the tide and not against it. Discern the signs of the times and do not get caught in the undertow when the tide is flowing out. Those who hesitate and are late in buying or selling the last stage invariably have to take losses. Chapter 6. Your Weak Points Man know thyself. It has been well said that the greatest study of mankind is man. Experience is the only school in which most of us learn. Therefore it is necessary to analyze the cause of our mistakes much more carefully than our successes. A great success either in business or the stock market, is not attained overnight. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by single flight. But they while their companions slept were toiling upward in the night. Mushroom growth is followed by mushroom decay. A man who suddenly becomes wealthy overnight or by a master lucky stroke in the stock market seldom keeps it. It is the old story. Easy come, easy go. The man who makes a success and keeps his money is the man who, after years of experience, has profited by his mistakes and schooled himself against his weak points. To make a success in speculation, you must master yourself. You will find that you are either a natural-born bull or a natural-born bear, i.e., you either always hope and believe that stocks will go higher than they do, or you hope and believe that they will decline lower than they do. Then. You must discount your weak points in trading and know that a lot of your judgment is not judgment at all, but the result of your natural weakness or inclination for one side or the other. Learn to see things in a normal state and do not exaggerate either on the bull or bear side. Some men will find that they have too much nerve, are too hopeful, therefore they overtrade. Others will find that they lack nerve or courage and are afraid to buy or sell enough at the right time. These weak points must be overcome. You must learn to trade so that there will be no hope and no fear when you enter the market. You enter it as the result of deliberation and upon what you believe to be the proper basis for buying or selling. But you must remember that you can be wrong and that the way to protect yourself against wrong judgment is to place a stop-loss order at the time you make the trade. Then you do not have to hope it will go your way or fear that it will go against you for you know that your loss is limited. And if the loss comes, you will be in a position to make another trade later, which will probably prove profitable. Chapter 7 Essential Qualifications Patience Patience is a virtue, especially in the stock market. Acquire it, if you can. You must have patience to wait for the right opportunity to come, and not be overanxious and get in too soon. Once you buy or sell a stock, and it starts moving in your favor, you must have patience to hold it until there is a good reason or sufficient cause for closing the trade. Never close a trade just because you have a profit. Do not become impatient and get out for no real reason. Every act, either in opening or closing a trade, must have a sound basic cause behind it. Hopes and fears must be eliminated. There is no use selling a stock because you fear it is going down nor buying it because you hope it is going up. Look at your charts and see which way the trend points and follow it. If no definite trend is shown, 
Use your patience and wait. Nerve. Nerve is just as essential as patience. In fact, nerve is the equal of capital. In getting my experience, I have been broke over 40 times, i.e. I have lost all of my money. But there never has been a time yet when I lost my nerve. Years ago, when I was experimenting and working on methods for forecasting the market, I would get in the market wrong and lose all my working capital. But I never let it get my goat. I studied very carefully how I made the mistake and what the cause of the loss was. In this way, I profited by every mistake and loss and was enabled to perfect my method of forecasting and trading so that I could make a success. Looking backward brings nothing but regrets. I'd always believe in facing the future with nerve and hope. But let the nerve and the hope be based on some sound principle that will prevent costly mistakes of the past. During my career, I have seen many traders who had made one mistake after another and suffered severe losses, and still had some capital to work with, but when an opportunity appeared, they lacked the nerve to act. In cases of this kind, the nerve would have been more valuable than capital. Knowledge. In the early part of my career, I made some great successes and what might be called lucky strikes. I made a lot of money easily, and then I spent or lost it easily. But I did not give up or lose my nerve. I always figured that I was a better man after each reverse, because I had acquired experience. Experience is the only school to learn in, and the burnt child is the one who knows the pain from having put his fingers in the fire. Mistakes are all right and hard to avoid. They are good for us, because if we profit by them, they prove valuable. But it is wrong to make the same mistake the second time. Therefore, use every mistake as a stepping stone to progress. Analyze each mistake you make and the cause of every loss, in order to avoid repeating the same error in future. With each experience I had, good or bad, I accumulated knowledge. And after all, knowledge is the greatest power of all, for capital will always come to knowledge. Several years ago, a brokerage failure occurred suddenly and unexpectedly, and I lost all of my money. To the ordinary man's way of figuring I was broke. But as a friend of mine expressed it at the time, he may be without cash. But the knowledge that he has of the stock market is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, and in a short time, he will turn that knowledge into cash. I did come back quickly, in a few months' time, on a small capital because I had a greater knowledge of the stock market than ever before, and knowing by experience that I had a method based upon mathematical science which could be depended upon to forecast the stock market. I had the nerve to pyramid and press the market hard when my science showed that I was on the right side. What would have been the result had I been without knowledge and only filled with hope? I would have stayed broke, as other traders do who follow the fairy phantom of hope in Wall Street trading. Health and rest. Good health is essential to success in any line. It is one of the great assets for success in the speculative market. At least twice a year a man should close up all of his trades, get entirely out of the market, and go away for a vacation or stay away from the market and rest up. Let your mind rest and your judgment get clear. The man who continually sticks to any business too long without a rest or change gets his judgment warped. He gets in a rut and sees things from a one-sided point of view. When you are in the market on either side, it is but human nature for you to hope that it will go your way, and you therefore give greater weight to any event that seems to indicate a favourable move to your side. When you are out of the market, you are able to see things as they really are, and judge the market without a distorted view, with hope and fear eliminated. Traders who are continually in the market day in and day out, and never allow any time to lapse between trades, sooner or later lose all their money. I know one trader who follows scientific forecasting and makes a success. He never makes more than five or six trades in the year. If he buys stocks during the winter or early spring for a rise, and the advance materializes as he expected, he sells out and takes his profits. Then he leaves the market alone, sometimes for several months. In the summer, if he sees indications of a bull or a here market starting, he gets in again. And if the market moves his way, he may follow it up and pyramid for several months. 
When he gets an indication that the end is near, he closes up his trades, takes his profits, and like the wild geese, wends his way to the sunny south. Sometimes he stays all winter in Florida, hunting and fishing, then goes over to Hot Springs, Arkansas, takes a course of baths, returns to Wall Street in good health and fit for another tilt with the bulls and bears. He makes a specialty of trading in certain favorite stocks, he studies them closely and watches for certain signs that he considers almost infallible. When these signs come, he acts. He does not hurry until the time comes, but when it does, then there is no hesitation. He buys or sells. He keeps cool, calm and collected, and waits for the time to open or close a trade. Another thing he never does is to expect any fixed amount of profits or set any specific time for getting out. I have often seen him make a trade and it would go against him. He would get out and say, well, I guess I'll go back to my office and watch them for a while. Sometimes it would be days or weeks before he made another trade. But when he did, it was based on some good sound reason. And 90% of the time, the second trade proved a winner. But suppose he had held the first trade he made and hoped it would move his way. His judgment, being biased, would have become more unreliable all the time. There is nothing like being out of the market and looking them over from an impartial viewpoint. When there is no definite trend, stay out, watch and wait, and your patience will be rewarded. End of part one.